Now I want your thoughts on whether the flu jabs should be free for everybody. We are being warned that the NHS is busier than it has ever been heading into winter. Nearly 95% of beds are already occupied. Normally this doesn't happen until we are in the depths of winter. Now if we look at the Daily Mirror's front page here, um, they have warned of a quademic we are facing this winter of flu, COVID, norovirus and RSV. There already has been a 350% increase in the number of people hospitalised with flu compared to this week last year. Some people do get a free flu jab. This includes pregnant women, anyone over the age of 65 and over, is it anyone over the age of 65 and people with certain health conditions. But would making them free to everybody push more people to get it? Or do you think actually we should have to pay for them? I think it's about £10. I want to. I want you to give us a call on this. 0207 862 is the number. Reem, free flu jabs for everyone. No, and the reason for that is because it's never going to be free. Somebody has to foot the bill and ultimately it's always going to be taxpayers. We're already paying huge amounts of money in tax. We already spend huge amounts of taxpayer money on the National Health Service. And what are we getting from it? I think that ultimately we should be reforming the National Health Service into a social health insurance model like we see across Europe, where actually it was a response to demand. We're saying that 95% of hospital beds are already filled up. Well, actually, if we had a system that responded to demand and expanded as demand increased, as they do in the private sector and in many private and public partnerships as they have in the, in the European Union, actually what we could have is a much better, much more efficient healthcare system. But specifically on flu jabs, I don't think any of this should be free at the point of use. I think that we need to be thinking about the price mechanism so that people remember where their money is going to. OK, but if everybody had the flu jab, there would be less people in the NHS, 100%. so it could save money? It, I, it might just be a sensible say, financial financial decision. This is a short termism, right? It's that we're, we're going to spend huge amounts of money on flu jabs today. And again, it is in the grand scheme of things, it isn't that much money, but it's the principle of it. Why should a millionaire, why should Alan Sugar get a free taxpayer funded flu jab that is ultimately paid for by the Shell of Stacker and Tesco? Well, that well doesn't because make sense. They, pay, they pay tax too. The millionaires pay tax. They do pay tax. And why should those particular people have that money spent on them? I don't think that millionaires should be getting freebies at a paid for by other taxpayers. So millionaires should have to pay for their NHS treatment as well as pay tax into the NHS? I think that the NHS should go all together and okay. I think that we need a, Euro a okay. European style healthcare system. You'll be pleased now I disagree on this one. <laughs> okay. uh, it's crazy. I mean, uh, whatever we think about the NHS and I'm a big supporter of the NHS, obviously it doesn't, you know, it's, it's in crisis and it needs to have some sort of, I certainly don't want to go to any sort of private uh, system. But why not? Why? Because I just don't think. I mean, have you seen how America works? It's an absolute but nightmare. There are, but there are more than two countries in the world, Dom, and you've got yes, countries I know, but I'm, I'm like looking I'm looking at Germany, Sweden, Denmark, France. the Netherlands. France is a, is a good example, but I think that there are better choose. systems. But I think the Netherlands is the best example of it. They have much better healthcare outcomes. You know, we've got the second highest avoidable mortality rates in all of Western Europe, and yeah, that was that's, before that's COVID. Be, that's mainly because we so we have such an appalling diet, and we eat so badly, and we have a drinking culture. But on the flu jabs. It's insane. I mean, just whether it's short termism or not, the amount of people that will go into hospital with something that can be prevented by being given a flu jab, that's just a basic so, saving. So you're quite into conspiracy theories. I'm massively. And I well, do, I'm not into them, I'm right about them. You're right <laughs> about them, sorry. Well, you're knowledgeable on them. Yeah. And I do wonder whether there is uh, something to be said for giving everyone free flu jabs might make people think that there's some sort of conspiracy theory behind them and then decide I mean, not to get them when at Even when I knew this subject was going to come up, it's an absolute nightmare because one of the things, you know, everyone goes on about when I was doing, a t I wrote a book about conspiracy theories and I, I didn't actually write much about the COVID thing, but it is one of the big catalysts for conspiracy Huge, theories yeah. are the Kennedy assassination, 9-11 and COVID. They're mm. the three catalysts. And, and obviously there are a massive amount of people that were anti-vax and... and some of them, rightly so, worried about side effects, but others literally thinking Bill Gates is putting a microchip in your head and stuff. <laughs> and one of the things I'd always say to them is, you know, they go, oh, you're taking a vax. I go, well, do you not take a flu jab? And of course, they do. Some of them do they take a flu jab. They don't make the connection. Or meningitis they don't make the connection. or, or, um, or but, for variables. But, but you get extremists who are literally anti all vaccinations, yes. which are insane if you think of the amount of, the, of people, lives that have been saved by that. But you're right. People will think. If, if suddenly they give, they give out free flu jabs, there will be a massive uh, amount well, just, of these people thinking wonder, it's some government control. I wondered whether we have this 
increase in the number of COVID infections, flu in, uh, infections is because people are decreasing the amount of vaccines they're having after COVID. I, I, I don't have any stats but then to back that up. The conspiracists just... would say that this is all big pharma basically just making up diseases so that they could, you know, pump, pump you full of stuff actors, you have to pay for. Actors so they won't be happy the if the it's NHS. free. But, I, think, yeah. I think people are right to be critical of the government mm. and right to question the real intention behind a lot of government schemes. Now, I think that I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think that people are right to question whether or not vaccines are, are indeed going to be as effective as they could be. Now, you are right. There are many, many people that genuinely are just against all vaccines and they are pretty crazy. However, there are many people that have genuine concerns about the longevity of vaccines, so the COVID vaccine, how quickly it took to, mm. to it's actually create it. So it's fine. Well, but this is the point. The government were considering making it compulsory. They were considering vaccine passports. This, this stuff is scary, well, right? Well, they did have vaccine like, did passports, have, yeah. but that they was at a time of total panic. And but, I, that doesn't, but that doesn't matter. That shouldn't take away our principles. If it doesn't, take away, your, it have doesn't the right... take away your principles, and you definitely have a right, but I do think the idea, the, the basic idea behind these conspiracy theories is the idea that there's some overreaching secret power that's trying to do stuff and retain control. But and governments can't maybe, even do traffic, you, you know. You do say that, but perhaps if the government was to, and I don't think the government's suggesting this, to give free flu vaccines to everyone, maybe one of their reasons for doing it would be to stop people taking time off work to keep the economy maybe. going. It may not be for the, the fluffy, for our health and our well-being reasons that we imagine. I mean, imagined. if it does good... Does it matter? Well, I do, well, that's and no one's forcing for people you. At certainly, with I the think flu the, jab, the point, yeah, no the point is there, ha there cannot be any kind of enforcement. I agree here. with you. I think that I agree with you. people have the unequivocal right to do whatever I mean, they want with their own bodies. Definitely during COVID, it went a bit crazy with, definitely, with, with, because people didn't know what was going on. Stephanie from Worcestershire, what do you think about free flu jabs for everybody? Oh, I think it's a fantastic idea if if people obviously open to having it done. I don't think forcing people to have it done is the right oh, idea. No one's saying that. Nobody's though. suggesting that. No, I. I think obviously what happened with COVID, as you've quite rightly said, it, it did make people go a little do lally. Yeah. Um, too lally. Even for my cause. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm due for surgery um, in a couple of weeks' time, and I actually went to my doctor and asked for the COVID and the flu jab because in all my documents it says, you know, please avoid having COVID, uh, getting anywhere near people with COVID, and please have this vaccine for flu and COVID if you can. And my, J my GP actually contacted me back and said, oh, sorry, you're not eligible to have either of those, which I thought was a bit strange considering I'm, I'm going to have surgery and I'm going to be in hospital. And I thought, oh, you know, best thing to be doing. Um, so there you go. I'm not going to be doing that now. Oh, Stephanie. <laughs> and, and so I suppose if you pay, you're going private then. And would you consider going privately to get these vaccines? Um, I could do, I suppose. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm, I'm fairly healthy-ish. I was eligible before, but I'm not anymore. Um, uh, due to other uh, health issues that have corrected themselves in the last couple of years. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's a great idea, especially for the elderly um, or the, the the people who are more um, uh, who uh, immunology who need it. Who may not necessarily yeah. know that they need it as well. I, I, over sixty um, fives will be able to get the the flu vaccine anyway, so it's it's available yeah. to them. We're talking about sort of younger. Working think, aged people actually, so it may help the economy actually if more people exactly. got the flu jab. And there are a lot of younger people who I don't think realise need it because they don't think they're going to be struck admit, down by it. I never took the flu vaccine until I, I I got pregnant and then all of a sudden I was offered it and I thought, you oh, is that an option? You don't take it now? until you get a really bad bout. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. 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 Stephanie, thank you very much for your call. Chris from East Yorkshire, what's your view on a free jab for everybody? Yeah, well, I think there should be so free for everybody. But, I mean, I'm, I'm already over 65, so I'm getting mine free anyway. Mm -hmm. But my argument is, when the NHS was launched originally, that's when national insurance was launched. So, effectively, the system you're all proposing about going to the French system and pay for it with insurance, we have paid for it with our national insurance. That's what national insurance came yeah, out for, to pay, pay for, for the it, NHS. Chris. So really, the government have usurped it, and it just made it just another tax as we've seen. You know, uh, but but it was originally that's why it's called yeah. national you're, insurance. So Chris, you're right. You're right in principle. That's what we're told. But we also know in reality, national insurance does not cover the cost of the national health service. The national health service is expected to go to budgets of almost two hundred billion pounds 
a year, National Health Service, uh, National Insurance does not cover that. So ultimately, the National Health Service is being funded by other taxes. Ultimately, I don't think that millionaires should be getting freebies off the NHS You're that are paid for by taxpayers. Getting freebies the I am because I think that it's I think it's unprincipled. I think. But that... Do you think there are a lot of them doing that? Well, uh, well uh, can I can I say something on that? What's one? the question? Uh, uh, should be for everyone. Yeah. The thing about that, I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not a millionaire, I'm, I'm a pensioner. But as long as those billionaires who invent the money, they've probably paid the higher rate tax already. They've been, uh, uh, so to always pick on millionaires, that, I, that, that annoys me. All right, they're fortunate, and, and, but I think that's the politics of envy. Those I'm not picking on them, I think... They, I think they, I th they, they, no, but they've already paid a lot more taxes than you and... Well, you're not, absolutely no, right, you're wages, absolutely right. So but, why should but, we be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, but why should we be paying more taxes in order to pay for all of these freebies for everyone? Ultimately, that looks like socialism. That's effectively saying that no matter how much you earn, you're all going to be getting the exact same stuff. The question is, do we think that flu jabs should be going to absolutely everybody? I don't think so. OK, Chris, thank you very much for your call. Paul from Port Talbot, Talbot what's your view? I a storm, all right, Doug. Oh, good. Listen, uh... What do you think about flu jabs for everybody? Not for everybody, no. Because are you telling me that um, you know these pensioners' bonuses as well? Are you telling me that Mick Jagger and uh, deserves a free job on his pension? Yeah, well, yeah he's this a lot of tax. added thing. He's got to I'm, keep dancing. I'm going to make the argument that yeah, he's got to keep dancing, and he does still dance. And uh, also, he's paid a lot of tax, so he's paid a lot into the NHS. Why shouldn't he get a vaccine out of it? Come on, let's get real. Come on. <laughs> Paul, I agree with you. Me, I mean, you know, I love your form really, of debate. Keith Paul, Richards sure vaccinates himself. I mean, so, you know. <laughs> no, Paul, I completely agree Abraham. with you. <laughs> Ring okay. me, Abraham. You say get rid of the National Health Service. Are you for real? Yes, I am for real. I think that when we're looking at the National Health Service, where we've got upwards of 8 million people on waiting lists, many, many people cannot get GP appointments, and we've got the second highest avoidable mortality rates in all of Western Europe. We need to have a serious conversation about whether or not the National Health Service is an effective system. I think we should look at other countries in Western Europe and look at systems that actually prove better health healthcare outcomes, because I think that the National Health Service is killing people. Well, It means that we have higher avoidable mortality rate and if we inf improve the National Health Service as a system we would all be healthier. Tell you what free flu jabs for everyone escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul thank you very much for your call thank you for all your calls on this.